Hey, what's up guys? My name's Sean, and if you're new to this channel, then welcome, welcome. And if you've been here before, then welcome back. So here's what's going on in today's video. Instead of talking about the usual audiophile product, I thought it would change things up and instead talk about something that's a little more lifestyle oriented because to keep it 100% with you all, as much as I love the sound of a badass stereo system, there are times when I don't really need all of that. Sometimes it's nice to listen to something through a single source that's compact, visually unobtrusive, yet good looking, that still sounds decent. So when Klipsch came to me and they said, hey, would you be interested in reviewing our wireless speaker? I thought about it for a moment and then I said, you know what, sure, why not? So this is gonna be my impression of the three, their little wireless speaker. Let's roll the intro. All right, so here it is, the Klipsch 3 wireless speaker. You can connect this to your Wi-Fi network or listen through Bluetooth devices. I believe it has Bluetooth 4.0 built in, and it also has a built-in moving magnet phono stage. So if you like to listen to vinyl records, all you have to do is take your turntable, hook it up to this unit, and away you go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna talk about what you get with the three, and then I'm gonna go over its performance. So to take a closer look, let's start off with the top. So this beautiful wood veneer is actually real wood walnut veneer, which is a nice touch. To the right, we have our control panel. This is gonna be a metal material. Up top, we're gonna to have our power switch. Beneath that is gonna be a selector knob. This is how you select between inputs. And when it comes time to pairing it to your device, like a phone, you just hold down the selector knob for a few seconds and away you go. Beneath that is gonna be our volume control. But let's face it, most people who get something like this are gonna to be too lazy to get up to change the volume. And if that's you, the good news is it comes with a remote control. Beneath that, we're gonna have the Klipsch badge. This is gonna be our grill. I don't believe the grill comes off. I could be wrong about that. And I really like the grill material. It's nice and rugged feeling. I believe it's made of polyester, but again, I could be wrong with that. So now it's time to talk about the driver configuration, the stuff that actually makes the sound. So beneath this grill, to handle the mids and the highs, we're gonna have two drivers that are a little over two inches in diameter, one right here and one right here. And then for the base, we're gonna have a driver that's a little over five inches in the center. To the sides, we're gonna have two passive radiators that are a little over five inches in width. And I gotta say, that is a lot of radiating surface area for such a small speaker. The price is gonna be $3.99, but it will frequently go on sale for $2.99. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a close look at the back, and then I'll talk about how it actually sounds. All right, so here's the back of the three. So let's go over the features starting from left to right. To the very left, we have a service port. To the right of that, we have a USB input. Then we have an RCA input, which you can switch between a moving magnet phono stage, or you could use it as just a regular RCA in. And then we have a 3.5 millimeter input, which is kind of cool. Next to that, we're gonna have a grounding plug for those of you who may need it. And we have our IEC inlet for the detachable power cord, but that's gonna be it for the three. So now let's talk about how it actually sounds. So now the big question is, how does it sound? Well, before I answer that, I need to lay down two important disclaimers. Number one, if you're new to this, then you need to know that the Clip 3 is not going to replace the sound of a traditional two-channel stereo setup. So if you're buying something with the intention of sitting down and concentrating on the listening experience to where you expect things like dynamics and imaging and resolution and refinement, well, your money is gonna be better spent elsewhere. And the second disclaimer is, guys, come on. At the end of the day, I'm talking about a tabletop wireless speaker. So you need to put all of my comments into context from this point onwards. So having said all of that, now it's time to talk about how it actually performs. And what I'm gonna do to keep this nice and easy is instead of going into all these little details that I normally go over in my traditional reviews, I'm just gonna summarize its performance for you all first, and then I'm gonna talk about how I feel it performs with different types of media, the kind of things I think most people would listen to through a speaker like 
like this. So about its sound. When you get right down to it, it's going to have a coloration that airs very much towards the warm side of neutral. The bass is going to be strong. Is it exaggerated? Yes, but oh my god, does this thing output a lot of bass. It's actually really cool. The mid-range is going to be warm sounding. The treble is going to be clear, if not just a little bit tilted up. And overall, this isn't going to be an audiophile product so much as it is something that's designed to sound fun and engaging. So, Having said all of that, let me first focus on the bass because that's the thing that stood out to me the most when I first listened to the speaker. And to give you all some context, I evaluated the Clips 3 in the same room that I use for my normal traditional two-channel stereo setup, which at the time I believe consisted of the Dynaudio Evoque 10 monitors. They're about this big and retail for $1,600 a pair, and they were connected to some fancy electronics. I think all told, the system was around seven or $8,000. Let me tell you, the Clips 3 actually had more bass output, more visceral bass output than that fancy audiophile system. I could actually fill the bass through the floor, through the chair. I mean, no, was it the same quality of bass? Not even close. But just the fact that it could do that is pretty awesome. And I think it's really important because not only does bass form the foundation of a lot of the things that we listen to, but sometimes it's just fun. And to me, that's what a speaker like this should be. And that, of course, leads me to how I feel it performs with different types of media. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is how the Clips 3 handles dialogue or the human voice. And I want to start here because I feel like most of the people who buy a speaker like this are going to use it for things like podcasts, YouTube videos, TV, and movies. And in my experience, the dialogue through the Clips 3 is very clear and very intelligible. And that's despite its voicing, because even though the bass is boosted and the mid-range is warm, it's not muddy sounding. And I never found a point to where I had to stop what I was listening to and rewind just because I couldn't make out what people were saying. Now, when it comes to people who listen to movies through this thing, I would say that you're going to be surprised by how much bass it has. But to be clear, it's not going to replicate the sound of a subwoofer, nor does it project sound out like it's mimicking a 5.1 system. In fact, the speaker is very directional. So when you listen to it, you're going to know exactly where it is in your room. Anyways, now it's time to talk about how it performs with different types of music. So, as you can imagine, any speaker that has a lot of bass is usually going to serve certain genres well, like hip-hop, R&B, and electronic. Now, is it going to be the quickest bass in the world? No. But it's going to be very strong, and I think if you're fans of that kind of music, then yeah, it's going to be really good. Now, what you do need to be aware of is that the treble, the top end, it's not going to be the most refined sounding top end in the world. And if you listen to recordings that are sibilant, by which I mean they have that sound to it, this speaker isn't really going to hide that, and it's just something that you need to be aware of. Now, moving on, I think there are three genres of music that really shine through the three. The first being jazz, especially 50s, 60s era Blue Note records. There's just a tone to this speaker that seems so right with it because you get that strong bass that sets that great rhythmic foundation. You get that nice warm mid-range, which is great for vocals, especially male vocals. And then the top end is just sharp enough to where it sounds pretty good with instruments like you know brass, with a guitar. It's, it just makes for a really fun listening experience. And then there's going to be classical music, especially when it comes to quartets or more simple pieces. That can sound really fun and engaging for the same reasons. Now, when it comes to full-scale symphonies, that's where this speaker tends to run into a brick wall because, let's face it, there's a lot going on with those recordings. And while I think tonally it sounds good, it's not going to replicate what you hear from a hi-fi system in terms of instrument separation and ultimate clarity. Another genre that this speaker sounds great with, unsurprisingly, is classic rock. I'm talking about Leonard Skib, Leonard Skib, Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, Santana. I mean, it's Klipsch. Of course, it's going to sound great with that. And uh, indie music also sounds pretty good. Metal music is okay. That strong bass definitely serves it well. But it's not going to have that same dynamic output that you're going to get from more of a traditional speaker. But again, this isn't meant to give you that experience. Instead, it's just meant to sound full and fun from a small package. And I think it does a really good job. So that is what you should expect from the Clips 3 in terms of performance. But there's going to be some problems that we need to go over. So why don't we do that now? All right, so there are three things I need to mention in this section. 
Number one, even though this small speaker does a really good job of outputting a lot of sound for its size, it's not gonna be the best match for somebody who has a big room and you wanna listen at loud volumes. In fact, I would say that if you listen at loud volumes period, this probably isn't gonna be the best option for you because it's just the limitation of its design. You have one small active woofer in there that's moving a lot to produce all of that bass. So when you crank the volume, it starts to move even more and it doesn't take long until you hit distortion. Now, beyond that, number two, unless there's something that I'm not aware of, I wish this unit came with tone controls because it would be nice to have a little bit of flexibility in tailoring the sound to your taste. Maybe you don't want all of that bass, or maybe you wish the top end was just a little brighter and a little more lively. It'd be nice to have that control. And then lastly, this is something that at least I experience. I'm not sure if anybody else does, but I noticed that when I take my phone off of sleep mode, whenever it's tethered to this unit, I'll get a few seconds worth of just like low static noise. Doesn't last very long. It's not even that annoying really, but it's nonetheless worth reporting. Anyways, that's gonna be it for the caveats. And that leads me to my final thoughts about the Eclipse 3. Okay, so let's wrap this whole thing up. I think when you take a step back and you look at the three for what it really is, which is a compact, good looking speaker that's easy to work with, that'll output a lot of sound for its size, I feel like it's a good solution. Now, is it an audiophile product? No, not really. I mean, you could take the same amount of money and put it towards, say, a set of passive speakers and an entry-level receiver, or even a set of active speakers, and you're going to get better sound out of those solutions. But that's not really the point of the three. It's not meant to compete with a more traditional setup. Instead, it's meant to give you good sound from a small package. And to that end, I think it is a very good solution. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this review by telling you all my personal story with the Clip 3 because I feel like this is gonna resonate more with people who are experienced audiophiles. So, when I brought in this speaker for a review, I let Clips know that the odds of me sending it back without a review are really high because number one, I don't know if I'm even gonna like it. And then number two, it's not the normal product that I talk about here at Zero Fidelity and I just don't know who's gonna care. And when I hooked it up and I got it going, my first impressions were pretty much in line with my expectations. I was like, okay, yeah, this is, okay, it's decent sounding, but it's definitely a huge step down from what I'm used to. But then something happened. I listened to it more. And then I listened to it even more through things like podcast and YouTube videos or listening to jazz music. And through time, I actually grew to really like it. Now, of course, it doesn't replace a more traditional system to say that for the second time now, but it's nonetheless a pleasing speaker. And I think it's a great solution for somebody who just wants good sound as you go about your day doing other things. And if that's what you're looking for, definitely check it out. Anyways, guys, that's going to be my take on the Clip 3. As always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace.